and welcome to this service of virtual Christian worship. I'm Reverend John Van Nuys. I'm the pastor at Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church in Crawfordsville, Indiana. On behalf of our entire church family, I'd like to welcome you to this service. Although we are separated spatially from one another due to the pandemic, we are nonetheless together spiritually because the Holy Spirit is present and where two or more are gathered, God is here. So we welcome you and let us now prepare our hearts to come before the Lord in worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is God that made us and we are his. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks to the Lord, bless God's name. For the Lord is good, God's steadfast love endures forever, and God's faithfulness to all generations. The opening hymn is, O Worship the King, All Glorious Above. O worship the King, all glorious above, O gratefully sing God's power and God's love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilion in splendor and girded with praise. O tell of God's might, O sing of God's grace, whose robe is the light, whose canopy space. Whose chariots of wrath are deep thunder clouds form, and bright is God's path on the wings of the storm. The earth with its store of wonders untold, Almighty your power has found it of old. Established it fast by a changeless decree, and round it has cast like a mantle the sea. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in you do we trust, nor find you to fail. Your mercies, how tender, how firm to the end, our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. God has promised that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore, let us call upon the Lord, confessing our sins. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Almighty and gracious God, we confess that we have failed to love you with all our heart, soul, and mind. We have failed to love our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved tenderly, nor acted justly, nor walked humbly with you. O oh God, have mercy on us. Forgive our sin and raise us to new life that we may serve you faithfully, love others genuinely, and give honor to your holy name. Amen. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, believe in the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please join
join me in the prayer of illumination. Holy God, speak your word to us and breathe your spirit upon us that we may know the truth and follow the way that leads to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please pray with me. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from Philippians chapter 3, starting in verse 4b. Listen for a word from the Lord. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews. As to the law, a Pharisee. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. But this one thing I do, and I don't consider that I have made it my own, but forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal of the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. In my life, I have learned there are many ways to introduce yourself, depending on the context. For example, I remember in grade school, you often would have to go around the classroom on the first day every fall and say your name and answer some kind of boring or silly question like, what did you do this summer? Or what is your favorite ice cream topping? In seminary, you always introduced yourself with your name, your denomination, and your Enneagram number. In my new job, people want to know my name, where I'm from originally and where I'm from most recently, and my theology of the role of the pastor. I still have not quite figured out my full answer to that question, let alone my quick answer, but I digress. To break the ice with all of you, my name is Kelly Spencer. I use she, her pronouns. I'm originally from Charleston, South Carolina, and most recently from Princeton, New Jersey, where I just finished my master's in divinity. I'm in the ordination process in the Presbyterian Church, USA. I'm in Enneagram number two, the helper. This summer, I got married and started my first full-time job in ministry. And most importantly, my favorite ice cream topping is crushed up Oreos. Paul takes a different approach to introducing himself in the book of Philippians. Contemporary ears sometimes hear Paul's autobiographical speeches as arrogance. However, this was a tool of his time to validate someone's argument. 
Paul uses his personal character to confirm that he has experienced firsthand God's love in Christ. Paul also wants his readers to know that he himself strives to live out the message he preaches. Paul's personal story authenticated his message and gave his voice authority. So as today marks my first introduction with all of you, I find it important to give and take from Paul. Maybe not boasting about myself constantly, but instead engaging the essential quality of authenticity in preaching and in living. In addition to my favorite ice cream toppings and my personality test results, more importantly than that, I want you to know that I have experienced God's love in Jesus Christ firsthand. And I try with everything in me to live out what I preach. Now, I may not have the rhetorical abilities of Paul, but I believe the heart of his message is so important for us today. We are constantly meeting new people. And often now on Zoom with just a small square around our faces. At the same time, we're constantly growing and experiencing new things that shape us, move us, that change us. Paul's message reminds us that through it all, it was God's acting in Jesus Christ that defines Paul. Not his experience as a Pharisee or any of his accolades from the Roman government. And the same is true for all of us. It's not our failures or our successes, or our presentation, or our bank accounts, or our networks that determine our value and our achievement. Instead, our worth comes from God's undeniable, unrelenting, unbelievable love for each and every one of us, exactly as we are. This applies to all of us, to our neighbors, to our communities, to our leaders, and yes, even our enemies and the people we don't even know exist. And this is what I believe freedom looks like, friends. The stories of success and failure that we tell of our churches, our communities, and ourselves, they are open to revision in the light of God's astounding action in Christ. The story is not yet over. Praise God. So I'd like to invite you today to reconsider your introductions. What comes to your mind? What's been missing? How can who we are be a testament to who God is? And I use the word invitation on purpose. Paul's exercise here in Philippians is more like an invitation than an intervention. There are no imperatives or you really oughtas or I told you so's. Instead, he offers that his life centers around knowing and experiencing the love of God. Everything else is rubbish. And I find that really helpful in this strange and challenging time of uncertainty, grief, and loneliness. And I admit that this truth in our lives is mysterious. I cannot explain to you the depths of how God loves us despite ourselves. And how God carries us and restores us and changes us, declaring us righteous rather than condemned. I love that Paul can't really explain it either. He says in verse 11, I do all this so somehow I may attain the resurrection. The best news is that this message doesn't change. The truth of God's identity changing love does not depend on our ability to understand it. 
all of this works because Christ Jesus has made us his own. And that is where our true worth lies. So my name is Kelly Spencer. I am a child of God, a follower of Jesus, a participant in the body of Christ. Everything else I regard as loss because of the grace, love, and fellowship I have with the triune God. Who are you? Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we come to this day praying for our world, our nation, our community, and those in need. Oh God, we pray for our world during this time of pandemic that you will guide all in positions of authority to lead us all into a day where all are alive and whole and blessed and that we are all past uh, the coronavirus. We pray, Lord, for all essential workers, for all health care providers, for all who are in harm's way providing care for us. Lord, protect them and shield them, we pray. Lord, we pray for our nation. Wherever we are in the right, O oh Lord, help us to continue in that and to expand that good work. And wherever we are wrong, O oh Lord, we pray that you will help us to recognize that wrong and that you will give us the strength and wisdom and courage to work to make it right. Lord, we pray for our community. We ask, Lord, your grace to be poured out through your love by our compassion to make sure that everyone is included in your blessings and love. We pray, Lord, for all who are ill, for all who seek healing in body, mind, and spirit. Pour out upon them your richest blessings. We ask your grace upon all who grieve. Pour out your spirit your presence and your peace upon them and walk with them as they mourn toward a brighter day. We ask, Lord, your grace as well upon Alan, Alger, Becky and Jim, Kevin and Laura, Betsy, Betty and Dick, David and Sheridan, Jenny, Jim and his family, Jim and Virginia, Judy, Lily's friend Dakota, Linda and Bill, Lloyd, Marty, Nanette, Roger, and for these additional persons and concerns that we now offer to you in silence. O oh God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is sung by Jenny Fight Swick.
till we meet again. Friends, may we go forth from this time strengthened in the knowledge and truth of God's love for us, Jesus' grace unto us, and the Holy Spirit's friendship with us, resting in the righteousness that we gain from faith in Christ. Go in peace. Amen.